Taco Bell recently announced a new limited edition cereal based off its signature cinnamon twists. And this new cinnamon twist cereal is part of a string of fast food and quick service restaurant branded cereals that have sprung up in North America over the past decade or so. We've also seen Cinnabon cereal, Krispy Kreme cereal, Wendy's Frosty chocolatey cereal, IHOP mini pancake cereal, Dunkin's caramel macchiato and mocha latte cereals, and Tim Hortons Timbit cereals. So why are fast food brands ending up in our cereal bowls? And where does this concept come from? This is the story of Ralston Purina's Dunkin' Donuts cereal. Originally founded in 1894, Ralston Purina was once a venerable company. You may recognize the Purina name today from one of the top-selling brands of dog and cat food in the United States. In addition to pet food, cereal was another cornerstone of Ralston's business. The company was best known for making adult-oriented cereals like Musili and Chex, but in the 1970s and 1980s, it was also trying to break into the growing market for pre-sweetened cereals for children. And with good reason. There were six major manufacturers of cereal, Kellogg, General Mills, General Foods or Post, Quaker, Nabisco, and Ralston Purina. And of these six companies, Ralston Purina had one of the lowest shares of the cereal market. Ralston hoped it could increase its market share by making cereals that appealed to younger consumers, who were more likely to try new types of cereals than adults who were typically loyal to one brand or type of cereal. Among Ralston's attempts at a cereal for kids was Dinky Donuts. Launched in 1981, Dinky Donuts was a cereal that, quote, looks and tastes like little glazed donuts, that would, quote, stay crisp and milk. But to Ralston's dismay, competitor General Mills introduced their own donut cereal called Powdered Donuts at almost the exact same time as Dinky Donuts. Ralston Purina was so exasperated with General Mills that it reportedly sued its competitor, quote, charging that the latter company put its donut cereal on the market to thwart Ralston's own introduction of its Dinky Donuts cereal. The outcome of the lawsuit is not clear from sources, but it didn't make a difference for Dinky Donuts, which was discontinued around 1983. Despite having lost out to General Mills Donuts, it doesn't seem like Ralston Purina was ready to abandon the idea of a donut cereal, but the company needed a new strategy. It wasn't enough just to have a donut-themed cereal, the company needed the power of brand recognition to lure consumers away from the usual mainstays of General Mills Cheerios and Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Now by this point, Ralston had already seen some success in licensing brands like Donkey Kong and Cabbage Patch Kids to use their names and images on Ralston cereals. But this time, Ralston wouldn't be licensing the brand name of a toy or cartoon character. They would license from a fast food restaurant that you're likely familiar with, Dunkin' Donuts. Founded as a coffee and donut shop in the late 1940s, Dunkin' Donuts had grown to a $500 million business with 1,500 franchise stores by the mid-1980s. And along the way, it had become the largest donut retailer in the world. The Dunkin' Donuts brand was well cemented as an American institution and consumers would likely recognize its name on a box of cereal. Now, fast food restaurants and cereal brands have been collaborating for years, with fast food coupons and special offers appearing on cereal ads and boxes. But the idea of making a fast food themed and branded cereal appears to have been a new concept at the time. Ralston's Dunkin' Donuts cereal was marketed as, quote, crunchy little donuts with a great big taste. Despite what ads implied, Dunkin' Donuts cereal was not actually made from tiny donuts. It instead included sweetened cereal in the shape of donut twists, rings, and holes. Flavors were glazed and chocolate. Most importantly, Dunkin' Donuts cereal had the familiar orange and pink Dunkin' Donuts logo and iconic mascot, Fred the Baker. Time to make the donuts. Introducing a big idea from a giant in the business, the world's smallest donuts. Now there are two things happening here from a marketing perspective. One is licensing, where the owner of a brand allows another company to use its trademark, typically for a fee. The other is brand extension, or using an existing brand name to market a new product. This new product can be related to the original brand or something completely different. From a licensing perspective, Ralston could pair its expertise in cereal manufacturing with the popularity of the Dunkin' Donuts brand. And by using a brand name that was already well known by consumers, Ralston could reduce the likelihood of another donut cereal flop. 
From a brand extension perspective, Dunkin' Donuts was known for its donuts and coffee, foods traditionally associated with breakfast. Cereals also traditionally associated with breakfast. So extending the Dunkin' Donuts brand into the cereal market seemed like a safe move. Now, a successful brand extension is not always easy. In fact, they can go very wrong. A commonly cited example of a failed brand extension is when Levi's tried to extend its brand into several different lines of men's suits in the 1970s and 1980s. The suits were something of a catastrophe because they took the brand too far from Levi's core identity as a maker of rugged casual denim. Unfortunately for Dunkin' Donuts cereal, it faced the same fate as Levi's suit lines. It was discontinued by the early 1990s. It's not clear from sources whether this was a disappointment to Ralston Purina or not. Many of their licensed cereals, like Breakfast with Barbie, would only stay on the store shelf for a year or so before their popularity waned and they were replaced with the next licensed cereal. So it's possible Dunkin' Donuts cereal was never intended to be a long-term product. However, marketing textbooks from the time cited Dunkin' Donuts cereal as an example of a failed brand extension. And Ralston continued to struggle through the 1990s, ultimately selling its cereal business to its former foe, General Mills, in 1996. Recently, a Dunkin' Donuts, now just Dunkin', cereal returned to grocery store shelves. Though this one wasn't based on the chain's donuts. It was instead based on the coffee part of the brand. And Dunkin' isn't the only fast food or quick service chain to put their name on a cereal box. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, Krispy Kreme, Cinnabon, Wendy's, IHOP, and Tim Hortons have all partnered with major food brands like Kellogg's, General Mills, and Post to make their own cereals. These cereals extend the restaurant brands into grocery stores, giving the chains another source of revenue and helping increase brand awareness. Senior Forbes contributor Alicia Kelso also argued that extending fast food products into grocery stores was particularly important during and in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, when consumers were more likely to go to and spend their money at a grocery store than a restaurant. And so fast food chains wanted to bring their products to where customers already were. The newest of these fast food cereals, Taco Bell Cinnamon Twist, is a little different. Instead of co-branding with a cereal maker, Taco Bell partnered with Uber Eats. And instead of being available on store shelves, the Cinnamon Twist cereal was only available in select markets by using Uber One, Uber Eats, or Taco Bell Rewards. This is likely less about trying to extend Taco Bell into grocery stores, something which the brand already does, and more about encouraging consumers to use digital apps like Uber and Taco Bell Rewards. Whether the motivation is to bring fast food brands onto grocery store shelves or grow app users, it seems like fast food branded cereals could be here for the long term. What fast food cereal do you think we'll see next? Thank you so much for watching, I hope you liked this video about the history of Dunkin' Donuts cereal and the trend of fast food branded cereals. If you liked this video and like to hear more about the history of companies, products, and brands, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing below, it really helps me out. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.